This is Visitor's Book and I'm Maya, your host. In this program, we're going to be meeting with diplomats and foreigners who live here in Pakistan, and we're going to find out what they really think about the country. So our guest today is Julie Conan, Mission Director of USAID Pakistan. So let's go meet with her. Hi, Julie. So nice to see you. Hi, Maja. Welcome to my house. Thank you so much. You have such a beautiful garden here. It's really just such a pleasure to sit here sometimes and to listen to the birds. I, I really enjoy it. It's amazing. So you've been here now since 2019 as right. the mission director mm -hmm. to USA. Mm -hmm. But this is actually not your first time in Pakistan, right? When That's did right. you When did you first come here and how long ago was that? I first came here in uh, 2004. Oh, wow. So it was, it was a while ago, yeah. and I was here a time after that, from 2004 to 2007, and came back around 2010 and 11, and then returned again in 2019. That's pretty fascinating. It is. So what, like, did you have a particular interest towards this region, or it just kind of happened accidentally that you got a posting here back then for the first time? Well, you know, what was interesting is my first introduction to Pakistanis was not in Pakistan. It was okay. actually in Africa. Seriously? Um, I was in, posted in Sierra Leone and I was managing USAID's programs there. Mm -hmm. And the area that USAID was working in happened to be the same place that the Pakistan Army was working in with the uh, UN peacekeeping operation oh, wow. there. Oh yeah, they have a big presence there. They did, right. and they did fabulous work. And so I ended up uh, eating in their mess, mess uh, their dining mm -hmm. halls and uh, getting to know the officers and they were really helpful in my work there and helping USAID succeed there. Really? That's and insane. I thought that, that uh, for my next posting, why not go to a place? I'd already met some Pakistanis. I enjoyed working with them and enjoyed the culture. And why not come to the actual country where they, they were from? Oh, that's amazing. So they kind of gave you an introduction and like a good kind of an image of the country that you were coming to. They really did. They really did. They're just so hospitable and really dedicated. They, they were just kind of famous in Sierra Leone for that that dedication and commitment really? to the local population that had really suffered terribly. Yeah, so amazing. it gave me a very good impression. And the first time you came here, um, that was in Islamabad, right? Mm -hmm. Your first right. posting. Mm -hmm. What were you doing back then for USA? Then? Back then, I was the director for democracy and governance. Okay. So that work uh, had me working with uh, the National Assembly, the Senate, uh, the provincial assemblies, and uh, I was able to travel to all four provincial uh, capitals and, and get to know the people there and working in, in here in Parliament. It was just uh, such an interesting introduction to uh, the politics of the country and uh, the things that, that uh, those different bodies wanted to work on to, to get better. Yeah. And um, but the situation in the country must have been a bit different then. How big of a change have you noticed from back then to now that you're again back here in Islamabad? Well. There are really, I would kind of put it as three different chapters yeah. for me in uh, for USAID mm -hmm. and in Pakistan as far as my time. Uh, the beginning when I was there, it was, we were very small, USAID wa mm -hmm. was, and so we were getting to know Pakistan and Pakistan was getting to know us. Right. Um, the second time I came was when our relationship really was building up and the partnership was really building up and we were yeah. planning big programs, big infrastructure, and trying to identify priorities that were important to Pakistan and important to us to support. Yeah. And this third chapter where it is now is I get the benefit of looking back and seeing how uh, those have, have worked out, seeing the fruits of almost 20 years now of work and what has happened. That's incredible. And you spent quite a lot of time in Karachi the second time around. That's where you were based, right? I split that year between Karachi and Lahore. So okay. I got to see a lot of Lahore and, wow. and get to see the culture there. And then I spent the last half of the year in Karachi. And yes, got, got to see quite a bit of Karachi and a lot of wow. Sindh also. Wow. Um, that must have been quite a different experience from living in Islamabad now, where it's quite calm and no traffic. Yes. <laughs> Both cities, the traffic was really intense. I wasn't quite prepared for it, but mm -hmm. I was really glad that I had very experienced drivers that, that were quite yeah. prepared for it. So there was that. Yeah. And it was just, um, in Pakistan, there are so many different cultures. And so this was an opportunity living in Karachi to see the culture, to go up north in Sindh to the places that are not the city, yeah. and, and to see 
how people lived and how, how they were affected by things like the floods that happened in 2010. And that happened while you were it did. working here. It yeah. did. And so part of the, the mutual commitments we had was to try to build back uh, the infrastructure that had been destroyed mm. through those floods in 2010. And I remember going in Upper Sind and going into schools that were almost frozen in time, it looked like. You had, you'd walk into, into a school, a classroom, and you could see the mud line about a meter high from where the waters had oh, been wow. in a classroom. And you Gosh. saw that the, the lessons were still written on the, the board, the, the, the dates were still there. But the flood had, had really effectively destroyed the schools. So part of what we were doing as USAID was uh, we decided a commitment to rebuild 100 schools mm. in Sindh province yeah. and make them high quality schools that functioned. And so to come back 10 years later now and see those beautiful schools now, they're functioning, they've got trained teachers, the kids are going to school, it's, it's really gratifying. That's amazing. So um, just thinking back to the time when you decided to come to Pakistan for the first time, you obviously had um, gotten all this information from the Pakistani you had met in mm -hmm. Africa, but what about your family? Because I think at that time, this region didn't have such a positive image internationally. Right. People maybe thought that it's very dangerous to come here. What did your friends and family back home say when you said like, <laughs> okay, I want to go to Pakistan? Yeah, my, my mother wasn't so happy, Yeah, <laughs> but um, she trusts my, my decisions and mm -hmm. she's, she's a person who's always helped people in her life. Yeah. And so she respected the fact that I wanted to go someplace and, and commit to, to uh, helping and supporting people on the other side of the world. So yeah. In the end, they supported it. Yeah. And I mean, obviously, you've worked in so many different countries, also in conflict zones, right? right? right yeah. what, where do you think this interest towards um, working, like, um, I mean, having an international career came from? Was it something you wanted to do already when you were growing up, or it came like at a later stage? I think I always was interested. You know, I, I can't underscore the importance of books in a household. Yeah. And in my grandmother's house, there were all these books of countries around the world, and that piqued my interest. And um, I enjoyed always meeting when foreign kids would come to school and, and enroll. I always enjoyed meeting them and understanding about their, their countries. And where are you from in the US? I'm from California. Okay. Okay. From LA or No, for, I was born in the San Francisco Bay Area. Oh, okay. Okay. And um, how much traveling did you do when you were growing up? Uh, not much. The yeah. first time I was ever on an airplane, I was 17. Okay. And I was an exchange student going to uh, the Netherlands. No way. It was way. my first time being on an airplane. So. Oh. Um, that was kind of the culmination of my childhood interest in, in international places and yeah. international things. Could you ever have imagined that you would one day end up somewhere like Pakistan when you were growing up? <laughs> I hoped. I really, yeah. um, I really hoped that I would, I would live an interesting life and be able to make contributions. And uh, this has answered every, every hope I would have, is being able to, to live this life in this profession and be places like Pakistan. Yeah. And um, then you ended up working in many, like like I just mentioned, many mm -hmm. African countries. Mm -hmm. what, what was your first um, international posting? What country was that? It was Sierra Leone. Okay. Before that, I'd been a consultant before joining USAID, and I'd right. worked in several other countries in Africa. Okay. But not living there. would go there for a few weeks and then go back and, and you know, consult for USAID or consult for the World Bank. Okay. So the first one really living in the country was, was in Sierra Leone. And what was that experience for you like? It was really, um, it was a very difficult time for the people there. Mm. They've been through a civil war yeah. and just horrible atrocities. But it was also a time for the international community to come together. And I was really proud to, to be part of USAID standing up there yeah. and uh, being helpful. And they're rebuilding schools and rebuilding hospitals and uh, getting a food delivery to people who, ha who were just returning from uh, being displaced in neighboring countries and helping them reestablish their lives. So it was really, it was great. It was a, it was the, a, a difficult, difficult time, but still I was just uh, noteworthy just to be there and mm. I was really proud of the work there. And what other African countries did you end up working in then? I uh, also lived in Nigeria. Okay, fascinating. And you spent some time in Iraq as well, right? I did. I spent two years in Iraq. Wow. Oh. 2007 to 2009. That must have been a pretty difficult time there. That was a very difficult time. Yeah. Things got very loud um, here and there. So it was a difficult time. Nonetheless, it was doing um, work that I was really proud of as well. Mm. We 
We helped with elections there and um, worked with civil society on um, having a voice and, and articulating what's important to them and interacting with their with their government. And so I was very proud of that work there, even though, again, it was a very difficult environment. Sure, and I'm, I'm sure you were pretty restricted in your movements there because of the security situation. Um, we were restricted, but also we got around. We oh, were really? on helicopters an awful oh, wow. lot going from yeah. province to province in Iraq. Huh. So that actually brings me back to Pakistan because, you know, during the times that you spent here in early 2000s and then 2000, 2010-11, uh, the security situation was different also. How different is it this time around, like if you if we think about like how freely you can move around here in Islamabad, has, has a lot changed in that sense? Well, it you? was starting to change until COVID came and now right. we're, we're very restricted. <laughs> yeah, So, But we were able to move around quite a bit when I was first here. Yeah and go to a lot of places. Um, I think that we'll, we will be changing probably um, mm. once we get past COVID yeah. and are able to move around more and interact with the people that we want to see. Yeah. And how big of a culture shock was it for you changing from African countries to Pakistan? Like it's it's not that similar, is it? No, it's, it's very different. And you know, any country is different one to the other. Any culture is different yeah. one to the other. And um, I was, I noted things like there's a robust uh, media mm. here with television stations. And Which doesn't really exist in. No, so. it didn't exist there. And uh, newspapers and yeah. um, the proliferation of just information and opinion people. And, and I, I thought that was great. I noticed also there was a lot more infrastructure than I was accustomed to seeing in, in you know, the, really? the countries I'd worked in before. Remember the, uh, the motorway was just brand new then. Right, yeah. And things like that. It was just starting to start gelling here, here in yeah. Pakistan. So, so that, those are the things that I, I noticed right off the bat. Yeah. Anything else? Do you like actually remember the first time you landed in Pakistan? Is there like some kind of a first impression that you got or something that, that you still remember to this day, the first thing you saw here? Well, the first thing, it was my colleague he picked me up from my house to take me to work. Mm -hmm. And she was a colossally bad driver. <laughs> and she she drove her car up and over a curb. Oh, no. So we were stuck. <laughs> and what I remembered is a, a bunch of young Pakistani men walking up to our car. And I had no idea how they would react to us. And they picked the car up and they took it off oh, of the wow. curb. So that was a very lasting impression <laughs> of, of um, just kindness and generosity yeah when nobody really had to do that for us but indeed they did yeah that's so nice yeah, I've was. heard stories like that before as well like the first time they land and everybody's like going out of their way to try and help the foreigner you know indeed right and that's that's very heartwarming it gives yeah. you a very good feeling when you, when you exactly. come to a place like this and I mean obviously then you ended up coming back several times mm -hmm. what would you say was the thing about Pakistan that made you want to return twice it's a country that's so diverse mm -hmm. and so challenging, yet it's a place where you can get things done. Yeah. And it's, you always, in your life's work, you want to be able to accomplish something. Mm -hmm. And so I find when I've come to Pakistan, things have been able to be accomplished that I can look back on and we can all be yeah. very proud of. What, what are you the most proud of that you've achieved here? Well, I think that, like I mentioned, the schools in Sindh right. I'm very proud of. I'm uh, really proud of the, the Pakistan Institute for Parliamentary Studies mm -hmm. that was part of a USAID project early on and it's taken off and yeah. it's, it's been going for many, many years now successfully. I'm really proud of the uh, humanitarian work that we've done after the 2005 earthquake. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, if I can brag a little bit, I think USAID is often at its best during very, very difficult times. Right. And so after the earthquake, when so much was destroyed up north, um, to have USAID come in immediately with the life-saving assistance, it was providing water and shelter, tents. It was um, providing food. And then moving on later on after months of building materials for people to, to rebuild their homes. And then for some years later to be building earthquake-proof schools back up in that area where uh, many Pakistanis will remember that, that so many children were, were killed yeah. during that earthquake because those schools could not exactly. withstand the, um, the, the shock. Yeah. And so to, to see those up there rebuilt and to know that if an earthquake comes again, those children will be safe is, is you know, very heartwarming. 
Yeah, so that's kind of the thing that keeps you inspired. It really back. does. It really does. Yeah. Yes. So if you had to describe the first couple of years you spent here, what was your experience? Did you find anything really challenging here or was it more of like everything was super interesting and you really loved it here and you learned a lot about the country or was it where there are like some challenges also? Um, I, I think on the whole, I just was so intrigued by everything yeah. and to be able to experience the different provinces hmm. and uh, to go to Peshawar and people dressed a bit differently and the culture was a bit different. Same from Baluchistan, going to Kwaita and uh, being there. So I was just kind of drinking it in as 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 we were developing our, our programs yeah. and interacting with people. I just, just found it really just intriguing and, and delightful. And parts of it actually even reminded me of home. Really? Uh, in yeah, what sense? It did. <laughs> well, I, driving across the Punjab, it's a very, as you know, very agricultural mm -hmm. area. And the area that I grew up in is very agricultural, oh, really? and it looks a lot. The Central Valley of California looks very much like the Punjab. No, with, I, I've never with, heard that before. With, <laughs> with the, the canals and the, 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 the fields, really? and so there are bits of it that felt very, very much like home. Also, mm, that's so nice. And it was great. Also, you know, my colleagues have worked on, and my, my team have worked on agriculture here, trying to help the the the, the varieties of, of what's grown here to be to be more productive, to help with the, the marketing, the value chains. Uh, to help the farmers uh, earn more money from, from what they're growing. So it was great to be able to be there and then see how the farmers could be helped also. Yeah. So what do you think like um, about the image that Americans have uh, about Pakistan? Do you think it's, um, it's accurate? Or like what your experience here has been, has that been somehow different from the way Pakistan is portrayed in the media in the West? I think that there's kind of a delayed reaction that that today I think a lot of people have a, an image of some of the security challenges from some years yeah, ago without exactly. appreciating the, the tremendous improvements that, that have been made in exactly. recent years. So I think that there's, it's just there's a delay and I think eventually yeah. the reality of and the perceptions will catch up to each other. Yeah, yeah, people somehow don't realize, like even though it's not like constantly in the news anymore, they don't realize that it's maybe changed, you know? Right, exactly. Yeah. And what about your uh, friends and family back home? Do they like, are they still worried about you being here or do they kind of realize like, okay, <laughs> it's they, fine? They think it's fine. They yeah. miss me and I haven't been able to get home yeah. very much since COVID because international travel is so difficult. Of course, yeah. So we've had to make, make some adjustments, but they're not quite as worried about me as they were in the yeah. early years. All right, we're going to take a short break. I'll see you in a bit. Welcome back. I'm here in conversation with Julie Conan from USAID. So let's talk a little bit more about how you uh, ended up working for USAID. Um, you studied international relations at mm -hmm. first, right. right? What was it still that whole thing from your grandmother's books that inspired you to go for that or something else? Was there like an event that got you interested in international relations? I think it was the totality of things yeah. as a child, just you know, being interested in, um, in like for example, there was, there was a war in Africa, and we, as kids, we we did a collection, we did like a fun fair and raised money to, really? to send to children in no Africa. Way. Just I don't know why. I perhaps I think it's really my mother who was so such a is such a caring person that. Um, the idea of caring for other people just came naturally mm. to those of us in my family. Wow. So then it was just a natural progression of things. You, you just knew that mm -hmm. this is what I want to do and this is what I want to study. Yeah. I knew it would be something international. Yeah. So that was international relations. Mm -hmm. And then uh, midway through university, I kind of started focusing more on, on international development and, and mm -hmm. being really intrigued with, with that proposition okay. of, yeah. of uh, countries moving along. Right. And how did you then, you, you mentioned that you worked for some other company first mm -hmm. and then you ended up with USAID. Right, right. Uh, what was it about USAID that was so attractive to you as a place to work for? Well, to join USAID, it meant that you, you were in the country, you, mm -hmm. you, you were living in the country. And that's what was so attractive to me was right. rather so, than temporarily yeah. going back and forth, you never really get to know a country or a people that's if you're so constantly true. going back and forth. But yeah. 
With USAID, when you're posted, you were there, mm -hmm. and you live there, and you get to know the people, and you get to just see more of, of, of what is happening with your work and what's going well, what, what needs to be adjusted. And, and that's not how it was in your previous Right. It, when I was a consultant, it was more temporary, you know, uh, consulting advice type thing. Right. And, um, but it wasn't as satisfying as actually living in, in a country mm -hmm. and, and getting to know the people and yeah. seeing the work. And did you have like a specific interest towards African countries at first and that's how you ended up there or that was a bit of a coincidence? I, I did have an interest in, in, and do have an interest in African countries. I just, uh, something in me, I wanted to go where things are really difficult and for sure things are difficult in Africa. Yeah. Wow. But then I branched out, obviously, I've worked now in Pakistan three yeah, times, exactly. uh, the Middle East, and even in Latin America. Oh, I've, wow. I've served in South America now, oh, too. Oh, that's incredible. So, uh, for those who don't know, can you give a brief introduction of what USAID does globally? Sure. So, USAID is the United States Agency for International Development. And it was started almost 65 years ago now uh, on the idea that the world would be a better place if its people were uh, food secure, healthy, mm -hmm. educated, and could live dignified lives. So it's a, U, it's a government agency, the United States government, yeah. founded on those principles. Mm -hmm. And we work in you know, dozens of, of countries around the world okay. on programs that might be health related or education or economic growth or agriculture or uh, civil society. Um, human rights, all, all kinds of things that, that are just specific to whatever country that we happen to be working in. Okay, and how long has uh, USAID been here in Pakistan? Um, we've been here off and on since the 60s. Okay. So it was yeah. quite early that, that we were, we've been here. Yeah, and what are the specific areas that you focus on here in Pakistan? So we focus in three major areas. The first is the border region between Afghanistan and Pakistan okay. and uh, helping especially the former Fatah, mm -hmm. the merged mm -hmm. districts now, uh, helping the KP government with the that merger process and okay. expanding the writ of government in those mm -hmm. areas. So that's been the majority of our work is, is that area. Oh, that's fascinating. Another area is in economic growth and agriculture and under that is also energy. So we've done a lot of work in the environment for businesses, a lot of work with farmers, mm -hmm. and also helping Pakistan deal with uh, and improve the supply of energy, electricity to the country and, and managing that sector. Okay. And then the third area is, I guess we can call it building peaceful communities. Mm -hmm. And so it, it, it is working in areas that might be um, perhaps conflict prone, and working with the communities on building tolerance and understanding in order to, to provide a platform for more development, that it's difficult for development to take place in a community if, if there's conflict and tension that's going on there. Hmm. That's fascinating. And uh, do you do anything uh, related to gender equality here? And, and do you have any specific programs? We have, gender is actually part of uh, everything we do. Right, yeah that it's integrated into to every single program we have. For mm. example, we have a, uh, a merit and needs-based scholarship program for young disadvantaged Pakistanis. At least half of those scholarships go to deserving young women. Okay, that's amazing. Um, in schools, we, we push for girls and boys to be educated. Yeah. When we're working with farmers, we work with women farmers and we work with men farmers. Mm. Um, so there's, there's that, it's just, it's, it's in our DNA where we, we always make sure that, yeah. that women are accommodated uh, in the programming. There are a few other programs that are separate also. We have a, a women's economic empowerment okay. program oh, wow. that's just getting off the ground. And that's, that's around the idea that uh, women ha have the ability to earn money, to have financial security, it's important for them and it's important for their families and their communities also that, that exactly. there's, there's a status for women. Yeah. And so that, that's the kind of the focus of that particular program. Yeah. And you mentioned uh, the energy sector. Can, can you tell me a little bit more about what exactly you're doing to help this energy crisis that Pakistan has been facing for many sure. years? Yeah. So there are three dimensions of, of energy. There's, there's the generation, the transmission, 
and, and the distribution. Mm -hmm. And so we've worked on all three aspects of that. Right. And so we've we've worked with dams. We've worked on the, the power generation from from uh, hydropower. We've worked on trans building transmission lines. We just dedicated some up in KP Province a few months ago. And then the distribution, and then helping the electric companies to be able to to manage on a more economic basis, to be able to bill correctly for the amount of energy that's been consumed, in order to be able to to. Um, to keep providing energy, it has to be it, yeah, you're yeah. right. So uh, there's been those management aspects also of hmm. the of the energy sector. Uh, would you say the situation has gotten better now here in Pakistan in terms of that? It seems like it has. Yeah. It, it really does. That's one of the things that I've noticed from the first time I was here to this time being exactly. here. Exactly. It does appear that the energy uh, challenges are are starting to be addressed. Yeah, that's amazing. And what other uh, interesting projects or programs do you have here that you would like to specifically highlight that you've been working on? Well, we just uh, I just got a briefing on a really interesting project that has been in the Punjab over mm -hmm. the last seven years, and it's the PAC, the uh, Punjab Economic uh, Environment Program. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I really was just I, I participated in a few of the events there that that were really heartwarming. There was one where uh, women were were uh, given goats and training on how to raise the goats. No way. And, yeah, it, and it was just, it was just really heartwarming. They were from uh, I believe Di Khan and mm -hmm. Hawapur down oh, in wow. southern Punjab. That yeah. that took place. And to, again, to give to give the women an economic means for you know, for status and mm -hmm. also income in their communities by by having some sort of economic. Uh, project for them. Oh, wow. uh, another another thing was uh, we worked with and and establishing an olive research facility in Chakwal in, in northern Punjab, and that's to help Pakistan really get a thriving olive industry here. That's and so I participated in an olive uh, festival about a year ago. Who knew? <laughs> and it was wonderful. We uh, there were growers from all around Pakistan. I don't mm -hmm. know if people realize that. Olives grow it all over this country. Yeah, no, they do. They do, That's and they produce thing. lovely, lovely olive oil. Really? So I was able to test and taste the different olive oils from the different provinces, and to meet oh, the wow. farmers, <laughs> um, and watch the oil be be uh, be uh, taken from the olives and, and and put down into the bottles of the the oil. So those kinds Amazing. of things I just find really just just fun to participate and just really proud that we've been able to to work with people so many different kinds of people on these kinds of projects all right we're going to take another break i'll see you in a bit welcome back i'm here in conversation with julie conan from usaid so we were just talking about how much uh, the coronavirus has impacted you being able to travel here. But obviously this is not the first time around you're in Pakistan. You've been um, probably able to travel quite a bit here. Where all have you been? And is there anywhere that you're still hoping to visit that you haven't been able to? Well, like I said, I've been in, in all the provinces mm -hmm. and uh, up in uh, AJK for the, for the earthquake response. Yeah. Uh, the places I would really like to get to are some of the places where we finally completed infrastructure. All oh, right. So um, the Gomelzam Dam and the huge uh, canals and uh, for for irrigation that have been completed, and there's a road in in Baluchistan that that goes into Quetta that is a real a major artery that we're we're uh, had constructed over the years. So those are the places I would really really like to get to see is is the, the fruition of all of these works and all of these collaborations over the years. So you've basically been to every single province in, in Pakistan. I have. Have you also I been have. to Hunza? That is where I want to get to. Yeah. I have not. And so that's still on my, my uh, list of places to get. I hope I'm able to be there in the next year and a half. I'll do you do there. anything in, in um, Gilgit Baltistan? Do you have any projects we do. there? We do. Okay. We've had a lot of health programming up there. Mm, yeah, that seems like um, something that, that it's a very remote area, right? It is. So it's it very is. important there. Mm -hmm. But yeah. they've been great to work with. They've, mm. they've been uh, great partners in, in the health sector, especially. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Um, what would you say has been the most interesting uh, trip you've had here, whether it's related to work or just a touristy <laughs> trip in Pakistan? So I would say that uh, 
when a group of us were doing uh, election observation, oh. mm. we uh, were down in southern uh, Punjab, in Bahawalpur, Multan, and uh, we had the opportunity to go out into the Cholistan Desert. Oh, amazing. Which is a place that, I don't, I'm not even sure many Pakistanis get there. Yeah. So you're out in the desert and there's this magnificent fort out yes. there. Oh, I can't remember what it is, Delar Fort or something? Yes, that That's sounds all. right, yeah, that yeah. sounds right. And so in addition to visiting with the people there who are quite different than people in other parts of, of mm -hmm. Pakistan, uh, we had a chance to be guided around that fort and uh, you feel like you're just walking through history when, when you're in a place like that. So That's incredible. Um, it was great to, to kind of merge uh, or official kind of duties of doing election observation with, with going to really very interesting places here. You know, some of these archaeologic places are just unbelievable. Yeah. Have you ever had any of your friends or relatives actually want to come and visit you here? I have, and but they've never gotten here, so yeah. all, all they can do is depend on, on the stories <laughs> and the, the, that I have to tell them yeah. or the photos I can show them. Hmm. Do you think um, one day Pakistan might become a more popular tourist destination? I think so. There are, like I mentioned, there are just incredible archaeologic sites. Mm -hmm. There's just the natural beauty up north in, in the mountains. Exactly. Um, I think that really it, it, it's a, a, an area for the future for mm -hmm. Pakistan. and. And Pakistan, uh, in the early years of USAID, was a very sought-after family post for, for was people. It? This was a place that people really competed to come and serve here because people that. loved the country, they loved the people, and they, they just, just felt wow. themselves quite lucky if they were to bring their families here and put the kids in school. And um, What do you think was the reason behind that? I think it was just... Um, like I said before, it's a place where you can get things done. You yeah. can feel like you have good partnerships, you can accomplish things, you can live in an interesting country, your kids can have interesting and meaningful international experiences in a place that's very different from where they've grown up. I think that's what... what that's fascinating. I've, I actually never knew that, that it used to be a very popular yeah, destination. I think right now, it's kind of this like hidden gem. It is, right? It is, absolutely. <laughs> People come here. I knew what I was coming to because I've been here before, but mm. when my colleagues come here, they're just so happily surprised. They just feel like they've, they've uh, they yeah. hit the jackpot with, with the posting. Really? <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, how long have you now spent here in the country without actually being able to go back home to the United States? The last time I was in the States was last September oh, wow. uh, for the birth of my granddaughter. Oh, God. So um, I was determined, regardless of the COVID situation, I was going to be back there for, yeah, for her birth. Yeah, you managed. Oh, that's that's so nice. Aww. And before that, you were mostly just here, like yeah, since the start of the pandemic. Yeah. Have you found that difficult, like being sort of stuck here in Pakistan? Or <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't call it being stuck. Yeah. There, are, there are worse places that I would call being stuck. Okay. This is not one of That's those. Good. I mean, this is a, it's a lovely place, yeah. and we're able to work. Uh, my husband wasn't with me. My, my husband is here with me now. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he left for the states along with the vast majority of the people in the embassy mm -hmm. uh, yeah. last March, April. All right. And so it was it was difficult mm. living alone for sure. and trying to, to manage a, a team under difficult circumstances with COVID. We didn't know how bad it would be. We didn't yeah. know who of us would would catch the disease. Exactly. We, di we didn't know how it was going to affect Pakistan. So it was a lot of unknowns, yet yeah. trying to, to keep working on uh, not knowing. But yeah, so um, what what do you like to do here in your free time, aside from work here in Islamabad? Uh, on normal times, I love to go to the restaurants mm -hmm. here. Yeah. Um, Any favorites here in Islamabad? What kind of food do you there like There are a few. Um, there are a number of them that, yeah. that I go to. I, I, I won't uh, name any okay. particular ones, but but are they Pakistani, like Pakistani, Pakistani food or and and other Western. foods? There's mm -hmm. a nice nice variety here. Yeah, um, I am looking forward to the uh, the mangoes coming into season. Oh yes, um, <laughs> that will happen soon. Yeah, I know. I'm very much looking forward <laughs> to that being the case. And you know, some of the farmers we worked with also who are, um, are the mango farmers. Oh no way! Yeah, we're, oh, well, so we then you can get them directly from we them. We can. Maybe. We can. And we've helped them with kind of getting the mangoes ready for international market rather than just oh, the domestic incredible. market. Oh, that's incredible. Wow. I mean, that's something that I've always wondered when, I don't know if, if you can get uh, Pakistani mangoes in the United States, but They'll in Finland, 
it's no. not possible and the mangoes that we get there they are just like a completely different fruit almost mm -hmm. from what you get here in Pakistan that's right. so that's right yeah that's amazing so it's it's the 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 varieties it's the the sizes, the consistency, yeah. the phytosanitary kind of procedures, all of those things are part of getting uh, produce exported. And so yeah. so we're, we're helping with, with that to be able to have the, the oh. farmers benefit from the international market. That's incredible. Wow. Um, do you like to go hiking here also? Yes, I love the Margala Hills. It's just, yeah. it's wonderful having them almost in my backyard and being able to, That's true. to hike the hills. and hopefully not have an encounter with the, the wild boar that are up there. Oh, yeah. And, <laughs> and you have a couple of dogs as well here, right? We do. We adopted a couple of Islamabad uh, street puppies. Oh, and okay. uh, they were they were uh, fostered for a while, and then we, we saw that, that they were looking for forever homes, and so they are, we've had them now for four months, and they've, they've made their way into our hearts. Oh, that's so sweet. And they, so they were puppies and now they're grown up. Yes, and they were puppies. They were just in desperate condition when they were young, oh. just just terrible. And uh, there's a group here in Islamabad that, that finds these stray dogs oh, and, and rehabilitates them and then finds, finds uh, families for them. Wonderful. So you met, you met them, I know, when you yes. arrived. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> and um, how much do you actually interact with Pakistanis here on your free time? Like you mentioned, you met them for the first time in Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm and now you're actually here. Do you feel like you still have the same experience with, with Pakistanis being really hospitable and um, being kind of really welcoming to you? Yes, I, I love the opportunities to go to have dinners at, at yeah. people's houses and meet their families. Them. And that's just part of, it's always been a part of, of my being here in mm. Pakistan is, is enjoying the hospitality. It's just, yeah. just wonderful. Are most of your friends locals or foreigners? Here? I think it's a combination. A mix. It's a yeah. combination. That's wonderful. So, how much do you have left here in, in Pakistan still before you move on? I have about a year and a half left. Okay, so and still, still yeah, some time. I still have some time, and uh, one of my goals is to make sure that that these big programs that we started years ago get, mm -hmm. get to their uh, conclusion, oh, successful wow. conclusion. There are some projects that are still uh, underway, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. even despite COVID. We're still moving forward with those. We're still working on um, electric generation program uh, out in uh, the merged areas. We're um, working on a, a, a canal area for, for getting uh, irrigation water to people in Khaiba Pakhtunkhwa province. So there, yeah. there's a lot still to get done and yeah. the team is going at it and we're, we're making sure that we're, st we're still effective even with these uh, little more difficult and challenging circumstances for now. Okay, then it's time for our rapid fire round. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Shalwar kameez or jeans? Half and half. Ah, excellent. That's the first one. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Haven't heard that answer <laughs> yet. <laughs> Lahore or Karachi? Karachi. Okay. Your favorite word in Urdu? Shukriya. Nice one. Uh, your favorite country? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I have to love my own, but I do love Pakistan too. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> um, your favorite song? Well, the music I like in Pakistan yeah. is the classical music with the, the Kalwadi music. Yes, that I just just enjoy so much. The the sitar and the, the drums and the violins. Oh, I just love that. Okay, we'll go with that. <laughs> your favorite Pakistani dish? So I, I don't eat meat, so I would have to say oh, really? my favorite Pakistani dish is a Pakistani omelet. Ooh. Or pakoro vegetables. Oh wow! <laughs> How has that been for you? I mean, fine. it's fine. Yeah, I, yeah it's you no find problem. enough stuff to eat here. Just I've fine. been a, ve a vegetarian almost my whole okay. adult life, so no mm. problem. Cool. <laughs> Naran or Swat? I've been to neither, so let's say Swat. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. The best thing about Pakistan? Um, I would say the the people. The Excellent. People. All right, then it is time for you to sign our visitor's book. <laughs> Thank you so there much. You there we go. Thank you. All right, let's see what you wrote. Best wishes to all Pakistanis from the American people and me. Great. Thank you so much Thank you. for I've being really on the show. I really enjoyed meeting you. I really enjoyed it. Me too. Thank, Thank you. you. That's it for today. Please join me again next week. And don't forget to follow us on our social media accounts at indus.news. Stay home, stay safe, goodbye. Mm -hmm.